Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hook on Heroes. Hitting you with another brand spanking new review slash recap for Comrade Geeks. It's episode 30 now. Um, last week's episode was pretty good. I was just waiting to see what the juicy details revealed here were going to be. Um, I know we got some last week, but, you know, what the, the uh, fallout was going to be. And it was a pretty good episode overall. Um, so coming off last week, uh, um, Geats ends up destroying that Jamato, just like throwing, like kicking him, right or kicking him right into where Robera was at. So he wins the round, right? Next one's going to be, uh, um, it's supposed to be <clears throat> Nago versus Michinaga, right? Instantly he's like, eh, I don't want anything to do with you. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to do that. And walks away like the dickhead he is, right? So um, Neon's still pretty upset about everything, but she takes her rider ID core with her and goes to um, her, back to her house where she got actually the same place where she got slapped by her mom uh, a lot of many episodes back and uh, has her mom touch the ID core and she suddenly gets all her memories back and of course, reasonably so, freaks out and uh, like, who, who are you? You're not my daughter and blah, blah, blah. And as Neon leaves, because I think Neon should have thought that through a little bit more, but still, I mean, she's hurt. She wants someone to be on her side. Her mom tries to stop her, and she's like, no, it's okay. I don't really have a home here anymore. I'm not really who you think I am, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so she leaves. And um, right after this, we get a really good scene with Hyun arguing with um, Kosei, who is um, Nago's dad, right? Um, time fire. <laughs> time fire's actor, anyway. So, um, <coughs> I'm telling him, you know, how could you do this? Like, this is a huge revelation, blah, blah, blah. And he reveals to him more details of that scene we saw where he wished for his daughter to come back, right? So when Niram originally told him that, um, about how the wish would work, he says, well, what does it matter? If it's going to be a daughter, I don't know, like a fabricated daughter from this goddess of creation. I'm still going to have the memory of my other one dying. What's the point? He's like, well, we could mess with memories too to make it so it's not so hard. He's like, well, what if instead you erase everyone else's memory but mine about it? And then since this is a daughter that's not really mine, instead of marrying her off to somebody random on my timeline, you guys come from the future, right? I want to try to marry her off to someone from the future so I can get some business deals, some connections, so I can have some a leg up in the competition. So it's kind of dark, kind of a dark uh, thing. I mean, like, we already knew he was kind of an ass anyway, but to see that he was willing to go that far for just, like, you know, an advantage in his business is like, Jesus Christ. Um, but, yeah, and so Kuhn is, like, stunned by that. And he tries to write, like, put, like, a little letter together to try and, like, tell Neon about how he feels and what's going on and blah, blah, blah. Doesn't work out. She ends up kind of confronting him a little bit. And, you know, she's like, how can you be my supporter when you didn't even know about this and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, you know, I just, I just kind of stumble on my words. And I like this back and forth of them where, like, he has very much so it's, it seems to be an idea with him. It's like the storyline they're trying to go with him is, like, the, the dangers of – truly being yourself like both online and in the real world and being <clears throat> being able to tell the truth to people about who you are and be upfront with people um which i really like for his storyline um we also get a good conversation between geats and michinaga because he tries to go to talk to uh neon about what happened geats does and she of course gets taken back to the jamato area because she has nowhere to go now because her mom doesn't want her there she gets taken back there for the competition right and he's confronted by Michinaga, who stops and says, you're not getting through. And he's like, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what are you really going for? And he's like, huh? He's like, what's really your goal? You say about stopping all these common riders. What's the point? Really? You're going to sit here while she's going through all that pain and say that you don't care? Say that you that, that somehow is okay? And we get a revelation from Michinaga that he's not just trying to destroy all common riders. Duh. He is also, I mean, as far as they know, uh, is wanting to use the JGP as a way to destroy, the, to dismantle the DGP because of the pain and misery it brings. So I do like this, expanding his like mindset and his goal a little bit. You know, it's not just like destroy all the Kamen Riders. Um, I think it's a little clunky getting to this point, and I think that they could have done a little better to like get us there before like now, I guess. But I'm still happy we're getting some of it and that it's, he's at least being expanded on even a little bit. So they fight for a little bit. I'm pretty sure they do for a little bit. And then it's just Jamato that, that Geats fights where he fucking decimates him. It's a pretty cool fight sequence. But Neon goes in there to fight and she doesn't want to transform. She's completely defeated. She's getting, she's getting her ass whooped all over the place. Boom, boom, boom. Thrown around like a rag doll. And Kuhn finally comes in there and is like, you know, I can't. And he pulls out his letter. He's like, I can't let this keep going on, blah, blah, blah. He's like, in the future... You know, we have an idealized self. We completely create everything about ourselves. 
and it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter you know that doesn't make us hell happy it could be the most perfect image of who we think the perfect person is but it doesn't matter if you have nothing behind it he's like it doesn't matter if you know who you are is something fabricated and was created by somebody else trying to relate himself to her that she was created technically by the desire goddess um he's like you still live the life you still live these experiences he goes i you know i didn't really understand pain until i saw the pain of you figuring out your identity and figuring out what really happened that's when i felt pain and emotion for the first time and i don't want that to happen again so it's a really like actually pretty emotionally enthralling scene you know it's the most we've gotten from kuhn honestly and I hope that he still keeps showing up in episodes after this. He doesn't die in this episode. I'll spoil that for sure right now. But I just hope he continues to show up because I like that. I like that he's still taking an aspect that's similar to Jean where they're from the future. They make themselves look however they want to. They're here in the past to play around. But now they've gotten used to the people here and have found their own ways of experiencing emotion in some way that's bringing something out in them they've never had in their whole life. And I like that. Um, and his way of relating to Neon with that. Um, so Neon, that really hits, you know, hard with, with Neon. She transforms again, uh, along with him, um, fights alongside him. I believe there's a scene where he like lands and gives her the boost buckle. And right at that point, it switches to like her inside the suit and sorry, oh, pff, gross. Anyway, uh, she like goes like her, like her little kid self shows up next to her and she hugs her, like accepting like that part of herself kind of a thing. So anyway, they fight together. It's, uh, you know, beats boost. Um, for, for Nago, that form for her, along with Kuhn doing his thing. And they kick ass, honestly, together. It's a pretty well choreographed fight scene. Lots of really good um, choreography and moves. And uh, just some good action. Um, they kick, they wipe the floor with the Jamato that are there. Afterwards, she's completely exhausted, but she does end up winning, technically. I think it's more of a draw than anything else, but still, she doesn't lose. Um, and so, right afterwards, Kuhn says, you know, you know I'm, I'm going to need much more in-person supporter i'm sorry for being so secretive now i see like how important it is to be one's true self to accept who you really are to throw away the fabricated side or what you put yourself out there as a facade and actually be your real self i see that now um and he's like where are you gonna go now she goes oh i don't really know i don't really have a home and kayla kayla does actually ask if she wants to stay with him for a bit i think she kind of turns him down or just kind of leaves which is kind of odd i don't know it's kind of a weird way to end that part but we do get a last little bit where Baraba reveals to Michinaga that um, the vision driver not only does it record the memories of the current person that has it, like their current you know um, game master or whatever, but all the previous ones. So he equips it and sees the memories of the some of the original first game masters forcibly taking Mitsume and making her become the desire goddess. So it's now completely confirmed that Ace is the desire goddess, like his mother, his son he is the son of the goddess of desire which i think is really really cool really interesting thing we kind of sort of predicted it going up to this point but overall it was a cool revelation alongside the stuff with neon i do kind of agree with like some of my uh my contemporaries like uh uh zio agito that it did kind of take a little bit of the air out of you know how great of a revelation and like scene we're getting with neon and kuhn but i still think it's going to set things forward going pretty well and could do something more with him too um, but overall, it was a really good episode. Um, I really enjoyed Kuhn taking a more active part in things. His whole, you know, break away from him being, like, behind the keyboards lurking, like, you know, Twitch chat type thing. Uh, and his whole little speech there at the end to Neon kind of, like, really emotionally giving his all to tell her, like, how much he cares about her, that he needs to support her, that, you know, they create their idealized selves in the future and blah, blah, blah. It was really good. It was a nice way to relate to her with what she just learned about herself. Um... And it'll be interesting to see where we go forward with her, exactly, storyline-wise, where she's at now. Um, and the stuff with Geats was pretty good, too. That that little reveal there was decent, too. Um, again, I think it could have waited an episode, especially because next week is dealing with that, too. So I think we could have done it on the same episode. But And it seems like next week sort of seems to be more Kawa focused I really hope that Kawa gets doesn't get the shaft and him, him and Kikura get some more focus. I don't really care that Baraba gets more focus with Michinaga because she doesn't really seem to truly be a supporter of him. She just thinks that he's on her side being chaotic and evil when really he might not be. Um, but yeah, so overall score-wise, probably give it somewhere around an 8 out of 10. I know that's lower than last week. I was hoping for it to like wow me more, but I think just such a kind of like the clunky pacing kind of pulled, held it back a little bit. It isn't a bad episode, but I do think the stuff with Michinaga revealing that he wants to dismantle the DGP itself 
Um, and the stuff with Ace and the stuff with Neon, I don't think it all needed to be in one episode. It felt pretty crowded, but I still enjoyed it, and I still am really enjoying each episode of Veep so far. Um, and that's that, that's that's saying something because Revice and Saber before that for me, I wasn't every episode enjoying it. There was a few little spots in between little arcs that I wasn't a big fan. Um, but uh, overall with Veeps, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And I think that once we get to the end, we'll look back at some of these more kind of uneven or rougher episodes with a different viewpoint and see where they were kind of going with things and that it, maybe it'll make more sense near the end. But uh, overall, pretty decent episode. But let me know in the comments below, what did you guys think of this week's episode? Episode 30, Revelations about Neon, Revelations about Geats, Revelations about Michinaga's true purpose, um, this whole thing about uh, Geats' mom and the Desire Goddess stuff. What do you guys think? Where do you think it's going? Um, you know, you're in the middle, you're in, how you, you love it, you hate it in the middle, all that good stuff. Um, definitely love to see the conversation is going. We're right at just under 450 subscribers, which is absolute insanity. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm currently recording on a brand new table right here my parents made for me. They built it out of like recycled materials they had at home and stuff. Um, so I'm really excited about that. You guys will never see it because you don't ever see anything else besides just my face and my collection. Um, but uh, as far as content, clearly King Oger episode 6 review will be up as soon as I can get it out um, after I watch it pretty soon. Um, I won't be on Henson's and Homies podcast this week. Not sure on the topic of the guest, but frankly, I think they're supposed to do a solo episode. So that's probably what will happen. I might be able to hop on, but I don't know because my wife recently got her gallbladder, gallbladder removed, surgery for that. Um, and so I'm trying to make sure she doesn't overexert herself with the kids and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but definitely I'll be on for uh, next week, the week after this episode, like, yeah, as we're recording this episode. But uh, thank you guys so much for the support, liking, commenting, sharing, watching, all that really good stuff. I really, really appreciate it. But as always, stay hooked on heroes. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.